In this lesson, we are going to go over um, one of the practice tests, uh, practice test 5D. Um, and you know which practice test it is based on this. When you go into the test, it tells you if it's 5A, B, C, or D. Um, I'm actually, I've decided to finally retire this test. Um, this is a test that I used um, for a couple of quarters, uh, most recently in the spring uh, 2017 quarter. Um, so this is an actual test that I used to give on this topic, so they, you can't get better practice than that, okay? So hopefully this will help you. Um, before we go through the problems. I want to remind everybody, um, factoring is um, when you break something apart to be something times something else. So I gave you guys some steps in class. You do have to have these memorized for the test. I will not give them to you. Um, but step one in factoring is always to look and see if you can take out a greatest common factor. Then after you've taken out the greatest common factor, if there is one, you should identify your number of terms and that lets you know which method you're supposed to use. So we'll practice that um, throughout this practice test. If you've already taken um, the class where we go over one of the practice tests, then you know that I recommend you go through and write out your GCF and your number of terms on every single problem. Um, that will actually give you a road, um, like guide map or whatever, to help you know what to do on each problem um, because it says GCF first, then the number of terms. So it tells you at each step what you should do. So when we see here, there is no GCF, so I'm gonna put none, okay? A lot of students would wanna tell me that I can take out an X here, but remember, a GCF means that you can take it out of every single term. Since this 14 does not have an X, you cannot take one out of there. And then for the number of terms, we'll say three, one, two, three terms. And we're gonna do this for every problem just to give you guys some good test taking skills here. So for our GCF on this problem, um, it is going to be a negative because we know that leading coefficient cannot be negative. So we're going to pull out a negative number. And then the number that goes into 7, 28, and 7 would be 7. And then if I've got three B's here, two B's here, and one B here, because it's understood to be a B to the first, then the most I can take out is just one B. I cannot take any additional ones out because if I were to say two, well, I can't take two from here. You can't take any A's out of this problem because this term and this term doesn't have an A. And even though there's a C right here, you can't take any C's out because these first two terms don't have any C's. Remember on the GCF, you have to be able to take it out of every single term. And the number of terms here is three. And so let's look at problem number three. Your GCF is none. Again, we can't take out any X's because the 64 doesn't have an X. And I've had some students tell me that they wanna take out either eight or 16 from this because they see that those are common factors of 16 and 64. We can't do that because this X squared has an understood one in front. And because of that one, it doesn't have any other factors other than one. So you cannot take out eight or 16 because you can't take that from the one. For number of terms, it's three. And so to move on to problem number four, our GCF on this problem is three A. The reason it is three A it's because the three goes into six, nine, and 15. That's the largest number that goes into all of them. And if I've got three A's here, two A's here, and one A here, well, the most I can take out is just one. And number five, your GCF on this problem is going to be M because I've got four here and I've just got one here. So the most I can take out is just one. 
And then there's an understood 1 in front of that m to the 4th, and 1 and 27, they only have a 1 in common, so you can't really take anything out there. So your GCF is m. And for number of terms, we're going to say that there are two terms, 1, 2. Oh, and I'm sorry, number 4, we didn't say how many terms there were. There were three terms on that one. Okay, and we will come back to those um, to finish out those problems. So here, our GCF is none, and the number of terms is 2. You cannot take any A's or B's because not both terms don't have A's and B's. And then 16 and the number 1 in front of that A squared, they don't have anything in common other than 1. All right, so number 7. We have 8, 64, 1, and 8, so I can't take that 8 out of there. I've got 3 R's, 2 R's, 1 R, and no R's, so I can't take out any R's either. So we're going to say the GCF is none, and there are four terms here. All right, number 8, your GCF on this problem can be a little tricky. A lot of students like to tell me that the GCF is either 2 um, or they'll say 4 or 6. They want to use those smaller numbers because that's what comes to mind first. If you are unsure if you are able to find the greatest common factor or if you have found the greatest common factor, write out the factors of each of those numbers. So we always start with 1 because 1 goes into everything. So 1 times 12 is 12. The number that comes after 1 is 2, and 2 times 6 is 12. Number comes after 2 is 3, and then 3 times 4 is 12. And we learned in class that when we get to this next number after 3, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, guys. Um, so when we get to this number after 3, it's 4. But since we've already written 4 on this right-hand side, we know we've written out all of those factors. So to do 24, always start out with 1. 1 and 24. After 1 comes 2. 2 times 12. All right, after 2 comes 3. And that would be 3 times 8. After 3 comes 4. And that would be 4 times 6. And after 4 comes 5, but 5 doesn't work because 5 doesn't go into 24. So then after 5 comes 6, and we see over here in this right column, 6 is already listed. So once we get to the bottom number of this right column, we found all of the factors. So now we want to look and see what the largest number is that they have in common. Because remember, it's called the greatest common factor. So I have 12 and 12. Those are the largest numbers that they have in common. So I would take out a 12 from both of them, and I've got three B's here and two B's here. So my GCF there would be a B squared. Number of terms here is two. So now let's look at number nine. For our GCF, we're gonna say none. We can't take out any Y's because this one doesn't have any y's. We can't take out any other numbers because the only number that comes out of these two are just one. And if we're just gonna take out a one, it won't really change anything. So we say none. All right, number 10. Oh, two terms for number nine. Um, so our GCF on number 10, um, five, 19, and 12. Well, we know that five is a prime number, meaning the only thing that goes into it is one in itself. And so we know that if there's a GCF, it would have to be that five. But since five doesn't go into these two numbers, we say that there is no GCF. And then, at least not a number, and then when you look at your X's, you've got two X's here, one X here, no X's here, so our GCF is none. And then for terms, there are one, two, three terms. Okay, so we will come back. Looking at number 11, um, our GCF here is none. We cannot take out any X's because there's no X's with this 20. 
And a lot of students want to take 2 from here because 2 goes into 8 and 20, but you can't do that because remember the understood number in front of this guy is a 1. And so since 2 doesn't go into 1, you cannot take out a 2. So our GCF is none. And for terms, we're going to say 3. 1, 2, 3. 12 is a little tricky when talking about the GCF. Um, so when we look here, we can't take any X's out because this 21 doesn't have an X. But a lot of students want to say that there is no GCF because you've got 721 and this is a, a negative 1 here. And there is no common number between those. But when we're looking at a polynomial, we do not want to have a negative leading coefficient. So the fact that this number in front, this term in front is a negative, we don't want to have that. So whenever you have a negative leading coefficient, you will always have a greatest common factor, meaning it can't be prime. So we would take out here a negative 1 as our greatest common factor. And for terms, we write 3. Now number 13, we have 10, 15, 4, and 6. None of those have a number Oh, all of them combined, there's no number that they all have in common. I've got two m's, one m, one m, and no m's. So I cannot take out any m's. And I've got two n's, one n, one n, and no n's. So I can't take out any n's either. So our GCF on this problem we would say is none, there is not one. And then for our number of terms, we're going to say four, one, two, three, four. And as a reminder, if you're still confused, terms are separated by those addition and subtraction signs. Number 14, GCF, we would say is none, because you can't take out a number because one and 81 don't have anything in common other than one. Can't take out any A's because this 81 doesn't have any A's. Terms, there are two, one, two. All right, so notice that 14 and 15 are actually pretty similar. Um, so our GCF, we're going to say, is none for the same reasons we set up there for 14. The only thing that's different is the sign connecting them. And then for terms, there are two terms, one, two. So again, we will come back to that. And now let's look at number 16. So on number 16, um, there is no GCF on this problem. Because for 27 and 8, there is no common number. You can't take out any x's because that 8 does not have any. So we will say none. And then for terms, there are two. For number 17, our GCF is going to be 3. So 3 because the number, the largest number that goes into 12, 12, and 9 would be, and that is a negative 9, um, is 3. You can't take out any b's though because that negative 9 doesn't have any b's. So the greatest common factor is 3. And then for our terms, it's also 3. All right, so let's look at number 18. GCF, well there is no number that they have in common because it's a 1 in front of that and a 36, negative 36. And you can't take out any A's because there's no A's back here. So you would say none. And then for terms, there are 2. For number 19, you've got 2 X's, 1 X, 1 X, and no X's. So you can't take out any X's from here. And then I've got 6, 3, 2, and a 1 in front. So there is no number that they all have in com common other than 1. So we're going to say that there is no greatest common factor. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. Now looking at number 20. For greatest common factor, we're going to put none. And that's because 40, 13, and 1 don't have anything in common. This has two y's, this has one y, but this 40 has no y's, so I can't take any y's out of there. And then for terms, there are three. So
So now let's go back to problem number one and let's actually factor these. Um, so since there was no greatest common factor, we skip on to our number of terms because that was what that uh, step two told us on our paper. So if we have three terms, which is what we say here, three terms means we use that AC method. So in our AC method, you should always identify your A, B, and C first. As a recommendation, I don't use, I don't recommend using the little dash. I use an equal sign, um, a colon, something. But if you just use a dash, it could make your numbers look like they're negative when they're not. So a x squared plus bx plus c is our formula. So your a is the number in front of the x squared. Your b is the number in front of the x. And your c is the number that's by itself. A is 1, B is negative 9, C is 14. It's very important that you guys remember those positives and negatives. So it keeps your, your coefficient will keep the sign of whatever is in front. So now you draw what I like to call the flying X. On top of the wings of the X, you put the A value and the variable you're using. So that would be 1X. And then up top goes your A times C. My A is 1, C is 14, so 1 times 14 is 14. And then my B goes down here. B is negative 9. So now I write out the factors of 14 because I want to find out what will multiply to give us that 14 and add to give us that negative 9. Now let's talk about our signs real quick. Um, so in order to um, multiply numbers to get a positive, they are either both going to be positive or they're both going to be negative. So there's a little chart for you guys. So if you need for your solution to be a positive, then they have to be the same. If you need your solution to be a negative, then they have to be opposites. So since we want ours to be a positive when we multiply, we're either going to have two positive choices or two negative choices. When we look down here, if they're going to add to give us a negative 9, we know adding a positive times a positive, watch, well, is going to be positive. But if I add two negatives together, that would give me a negative 9. So I like to do this to tell myself that I'm going to have two negative numbers. So both of them are going to be negative. So now I write out my factors of 14. So start with 1. 1 times 14. After 1 comes 2. 2 times 7. After 2 comes 3 but 3 doesn't go into 14. After 3 comes 4, but 4 doesn't go into 14. After 4 comes 5, 5 doesn't go into 14. After 5 comes 6, and 6 doesn't go into 14. But once we get to 7, we notice that it has already been written in this bottom right column, so we know we've gotten all the factors. Once you have gotten to this bottom number, you are done writing all of your factors. So we need to find the pair that will either add or subtract to give us that negative 9. So if we were to choose 2 and 7, and we already said that they're both going to be negative, so let's see if this works. Does negative 2 times negative 7 give us a positive 14? Yes, it does. Does negative 2 plus negative 7 give us a negative 9? Yes, it does. So that means that we can go ahead and write our answer because we can't simplify these. So we'll have x minus 2, x minus 7. That is our answer. Remember, you can always check your answers by multiplying them back out. So this is the distributive property. You could multiply x times each of these terms, negative 2 times each of these terms, and once you simplify that, you should get what you started with. The students that always do the best on this exam and on this topic, 
it's because they always check their answers. So looking at number two, we said there was a GCF of negative 7b. Guys, whenever you have a GCF, always put it in your answer space. As soon as you see you have one, put it in your answer space. Because if you forget that, that just completely changes the outcome of your problem. So I'm going to take out that GCF. And in order to do that, I need to divide that into every single term. Okay, so I write, this is my GCF right here. And right here, this is what I'll have left over once I take it out. So negative seven divided by negative seven is just one. And if I've got b to the third divided by b to the one, remember you subtract those exponents, so that gives you b squared. 28 divided by negative seven is negative four. And then, well, a's, I can't take any a's out because I didn't have enough in each of those terms. So I just keep that a the same. And then if I've got two b's and I take one of them away, well, then I have one left over. And then negative seven divided by negative seven is a positive one. When you have b's that are the same exponent, they're essentially gonna cancel out because a number or variable divided by its exact self is one. And so if you multiply one times this, you'll get that same thing. And then don't forget that C right there. You can't take any C's out, so that still needs to be there. So there are two things you need to check once you've taken out your greatest common factor. The first thing is, did I take out the greatest? The way you can check that is to see, does, do these terms have anything still in common? And they don't. 1, 4, and 1, they don't have anything in common other than a 1. And you can't take any B's out because this one doesn't have any B's. And then the A's and C's you can't take out because not all the terms have them. So then you need to check, okay, if I multiply this back out, does it give me what I started with? So that is how y'all can check and see if you did take out the greatest common factor correctly. So now, we need to look and see um, our step two. Step two says that you need to identify your number of terms and there are three terms. And when we look at this guys, we're actually looking inside of that set of parentheses. So the GCF right now, we've taken it out and it's already a part of our answer, but we are just analyzing this part now. So we saw this formula up here, AX squared plus BX plus C. Um, so in order to factor this type of problem here, it has to be in this form. The only exception to this that you might see in this class is if we had, let's say, um, AX squared plus BXY plus CY squared. So if you guys notice, you have an x squared here and an x in your middle term. So an x squared in your front, an x in the middle. And you have a y squared in the back and a y in your middle. So you would have something squared over here and the single of that in the middle, something squared over here, single of that in the middle. So that is a problem that you could also factor with that AC method. But this problem here and by the way, that is in your notes. If you look at your notes um, that we did in class over the AC method, um, I think that was somewhere around like the sixth problem that we did. So you can check back um, that to see what the heck I'm talking about here. Um, so when we look here, we've got a variable squared, so B squared, and we do have a B in here. But in order for this A to be okay in here, I have to have an A squared over here, which I don't. So this cannot be factored by using that AC method, which is three terms, because it's not in the correct format. So since it is not in the correct format, we cannot factor this. So that means that what we got when we took out that greatest common factor is our answer. So all of this 
right here is going to be your final answer. Now, just to make sure everybody understands, these ones right here that we put in front of the, the B squared and the C, they're not necessary. I just put those there just to make you a little more comfortable. But if you don't want to write those ones, that's okay. All right, so look at number three. I have x squared plus 16x plus 64. There was no greatest common factor, so now I move on to my number of terms, which is three. Now, when we look here, this is in the correct format because we have an x squared and then an x in the middle. So we've got two of them and we've got one of them in the middle. So we can use our AC method and we draw their flying x and we put the, oh, sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. You've got to identify your A, B, and C. A was one, B is 16, C is 64. So you put your A value, which is one, and the variable you're using, which is X, on top of your wings. You put your A times C in the top of your X, so one times 64 is 64, and then your B is 16. So we need to find what multiplies to give us 64 and adds to give us 16. So we write out our factors of 64, and if they multiply to be a positive, based on this chart we looked at earlier, you've got two options. All right, so if you want them to equal positive, it'll be these first two. So if I want them to add to be a positive, then that means my only choice is to have them both be positive. If I chose the negatives, that would have given me a negative answer when I added them together. So I know they're both positive, and I write my factors. Factors of 64 are 1 and 64, and then 2 and 32. 3 doesn't go into 64, so I move on to 4. So that's 4 and 16. After 4 is 5, but 5 doesn't go into 64. Then comes six, six doesn't work either. Seven doesn't work, but eight does. And eight times eight gives you 64. Now, since you have the same number at the bottom of each of these, that is at the point where we are finished writing all of our factors. We cannot go any further. So now we need to choose which pair will add to give us or subtract to give us that 16. So we choose the eight and eight and our signs say they're both positive. So now we have to do our check. Does eight times eight give us 64? It does. Does eight plus eight give us 16? It does. You cannot simplify these. One over eight doesn't simplify. So you can write your answer. So that would be x plus eight. If you wanted to write the one in front of the x, that's okay. And then x plus eight on this one. If you wanted to be fancy, then you can put x plus 8 squared because that is what this means. It means that you're multiplying it by itself twice, okay? Just to make sure, do not put or on your answer space, y'all. You got to choose one, okay? Um, so now let's look at number four. On number four, we have a GCF of 3a, and we said that anytime we have a GCF, we're going to put that guy in the answer space. That way we do not forget them. So now we need to take out that GCF. So we divide each one of those terms by 3a. So six divided by three is two. Three a's up top, one a on bottom. So you subtract those to get an a squared. Negative nine divided by three is negative three. You've got two A's up here, one A down here, so you have one left. And then negative 15 divided by three is negative five. And then if you've got the same, the A's with the same exponents, we said that those cancel because those just equal one and one times negative 15 is negative 15. So, well, and it was five because we divided. So we don't have any A's left there. So now that we've taken out our GCF, we use what we have left over and we say, okay, we have three terms and can I do my AC method here? 
Remember we said if you've got an a squared here, you've got to also have an a in the middle, which we do, so we're good. So now I'm going to draw my flying x, but before I fill it in, I have to identify my a, b, and c values. Please be careful that we are only looking at this part right here to factor it. At this point, we are ignoring the original problem. We already had to break that apart. So we have a is 2, b is negative 3, c is negative 5. So your a times c goes up here. So 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 and, sorry if you can't see my negative, um, and your b goes down here at the bottom, and so that would be a negative three. And you put your a, which is two, and the variable you're using, which happens to be the variable a, on top of both of your wings. We did that on every other problem, but they were always a one because all the ones we've done so far have added one for our a. So now we need to find out what numbers multiply to give us negative 10 and add to give us negative 3. So if we need to multiply to get a negative, well then they both have to be opposite numbers. One is positive, one is negative. So we'll sort that out in just a minute. So for 10 you've got 1 times 10 and don't worry about the negative just yet again. We'll sort that out once we know what our pairs are. And then 2 times 5, and we know we're finished because 3 and 4 don't work, they don't go into 10, and then when we get to 5 it's already written there. So we're trying to find the pair that will either add or subtract to give me that negative 10. So, um, or I'm sorry, add or subtract to give us that negative 3. So I'm going to choose the 2 and the 5 and I've got to see which one should be positive, which one should be negative. As a hint, you can always say if you have to choose, your largest number is going to be the same sign as your B value. So since this B is a negative, I'm going to put a negative with my uh, largest number. Or if you wanted to, you could do um, the two different scenarios. So you can make the 2 a negative and the 5 a positive and then do the other scenario. And then whichever one gives you the desired value down here will work. So since this one gives us a positive three and this one gives us a negative three, obviously this is the pair that we're gonna wanna choose. So now, this is something that's a little bit different um, because we haven't done one like this on um, the practice test yet. So since we have numbers on top of our wings, we are gonna have to check and see if we can simplify. As a hint, if your A is a number other than one, you will have to simplify at some point. So two over two, that does simplify to be a one and a one. So I'm gonna rewrite this as one A over one, and that's my my final pairing that I'm going to use there. And then 2 and negative 5, they don't have anything in common, so I'm just going to use those right there. So for my answer, I'm going to put a plus 1. If you wanted to write the 1 in front, that's okay. And then 2a minus 5. Okay. So now... Let's look at number five, and as a reminder, guys, you can always multiply this back out to see if you got the correct answer. Best way to do it would be to multiply this stuff out first, then multiply the 3a by everything you have left. So on number five, a lot of students get tripped up about this. Um, Y'all forget to take out the greatest common factor first, and you think it's using the wrong method. So your GCF was m, we need to take that out first. And when we have a GCF, we always put it in our answer space as soon as we can. So now when I take out that M, I divide it into each of those, and I have left M to the third, 4 minus 1 is 3, plus 27. And the M's cancel because they have the same exponent. Now we need to look and say, okay, we have 
two terms. And that's going to be either the sum and difference of squares or the sum and difference of cubes. So we can see that it is the sum and they are cubes. Cubes is when you have this exponent of 3 here. And then squares would be when you have like an exponent of 2 or they can be multiples of those. So a cube would also be like a 6. 9, 12, so any of those, and then a square could be a 2, 4, 6, or 8 for the exponent. But we're keeping it basic at that um, 3 there. So if you can't remember that, if you struggle to remember it, then you can also say, okay, we learned two different methods. We learned a car-car method and we learned a car-bus method. Um, which one had the three seats? and that would be the bus. So that could remind you that this method is the car and bus method. Um, so let's go ahead and again, we are just looking at this at this point. So to do your car bus method, you draw your car and then your bigger bus and you have to wash it with that SOAP. So that stands for same, opposite, always positive. So we take the sign that we originally started with, which was a positive, and we put it here, all right? And since there's only two seats in a car, we move on. So same, and then the opposite, so this would be a negative, and then this last one right here should always be positive, all right? So now we need to say, okay, we have cube root, cube root, and that's a fancy way of saying what times itself three times gives us this, what times itself three times gives us this. So what multiplies times itself three times to get m to the third is m, because if you did m times m times m, you would add all of those exponents together and that's how you would get m to the third. And then what times itself three times gives you 27? Well, that would be three. Three times three times three. So three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. So now, and by the way, you do have a chart on these right here if you need to look at it. Um, just in your notes, just flip back and it's on page right here. So on page eight. So if you're not in any of my classes and you're trying to say, what the heck is this chart you're talking about? It's right here. Um, so we we're talking about 27. So that's the cube root chart. And so it would be three times itself three times. All right. So now we learned it was square, multiply, square. So to get the front seat of your bus, you will square the front seat of your car. So if you have m squared, that means m times m, m squared, okay? It gets a little fancy later. That's why I go ahead and show you this now. So this should be m squared. And then to get this middle term, you multiply these two terms in your car. So that would give us 3m. And then finally back here, you square the back seat of your car to get the back seat of your bus. So if you have 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9. Believe it or not, if you multiply all of this stuff out and you multiply by that m, you'll get what you originally started with. Go ahead and check it and see if you get that. So our final answer is m times m plus 3 times m squared minus 3m plus 9. Alright, so now let's look at problem number 6. Um, there was no GCF here, so now we move on to our number of terms. So there are two terms here, we already listed that, and it's either the sum and difference of squares or cubes. That's what we just talked about a minute ago. But our exponent here is a 2, so that means that we're going to use that car-car method because there are two seats in a car. So when we look here, so difference of squares, in case you're wanting to look at my notes, those are your difference of squares notes. So you draw your two cars. And one of them is a good car, one of them is a bad car. The way I explain it in class, it doesn't matter which one is faster. So the negative could be here and the positive could be here. You just have to have one of each. So then 
we have a front seat and a back seat. So this first term is the front seat and the second term is the back seat. So what times itself gives you a squared? And that would be a. So that goes in the front seat of my car. Then over here, you're saying, okay, I've got 16b squared. And don't worry about the negative because we already took care of the signs. So 16b squared, you can't just say four. A lot of students say four times four gives you this, but you've gotta also think about the b squared. So it would be four b times four b. Because if you multiply those two together, four times four is 16. And then when you multiply those b's, you add the exponents, and that's how you get that b squared. And that's your answer, a plus 4b, a minus 4b. So now let's look at number seven. Number seven, um, there is no GCF there, so we are gonna move on to our number of terms. There are four terms and that is our grouping method and I'll put this here if you wanna pause it and look at those notes if you do not have them, there you go. Um, so our first step is to underline our first two terms and our second two terms. And then take out your GCF of your first two terms. So my GCF of these first two terms are going to be eight Remember, you have to take out the greatest common factor. Eight's the biggest number that goes into both of those. And then if I have, and I'll do this here just so we can see it a little easier. If I have r to the third and r squared, the biggest number of r's you can take out is two. So when I do that, I have, so we're dividing each of these by eight r squared. So eight divided by eight is just one r to the third divided by r squared is just an r. And then negative 64 divided by eight is negative eight. And then you have the same exponent for your r, so those cancel, okay? So now we look at the second two terms. And I'll cover this up just so we can see it. But you do need to be able to see the sign in front of the second two terms, so don't cover that up. So the GCF here, there wouldn't be one, but in grouping, you have to put a number down. So we're gonna bring down this plus sign here, and we're gonna say we can just take out a positive one. Because when you do divide both of those by one, you get the same thing, all right? So now, do I have the same thing inside of my sets of parentheses? This is our checkpoint. So the one in front of the R, it doesn't really matter. You can take it or leave it. So we do have the same thing in both of them. So the last step is to take your GCF out one more time. So you take out your R minus eight. And once you do that, you look and say, okay, well, what do I have left? So we have left eight R squared plus one. So your answer is r minus eight and then eight r squared plus one. And in case I haven't mentioned it yet, it doesn't matter which one is written first. So if you wrote eight r squared plus one first and then you wrote your r minus eight, that's okay, it, it, it really doesn't matter. So now when we look at number eight, and remember you can always double check your answers by multiplying them back out. So when we look at number eight, um, we always like to um, go ahead and write our GCF up here on our answer space, okay? But I wanna show you guys something real quick. A lot of students wanna take out just a 6B. I wanna show you guys why you can't do that. So, um, so if you said GCF was 6b, because that's very common. That's a lot, a big mistake I see a lot of students make. So if I took out from 12b to the third plus 24b squared, if I took out a 6b, so we would say that, okay, well 12 divided by six is two, and then when you divide those, you subtract your exponents, so you have b squared, and then 24 divided by six is four. And then when you subtract those, you have just a B left. So notice, grab my highlighters. So notice that your 
parentheses still has some stuff in common. So notice that that two and four, that's not your greatest common factor because two and four still have something in common. And then hopefully the pink won't drown out the red. So when you look here, notice they still have a B in common as well. So that means you did not take out the greatest common factor. So just use that as a lesson, but don't do that on your test. So we're gonna come back and take out our 12B squared here. And when we do that, I'll rewrite it so we can see it. So 12 divided by 12 is one and, oops, and b to the third divided by b squared is just gonna be b. And then 24 divided by 12 is two, and then those b squareds are gonna cancel. So now I need to look inside of my parentheses and say, okay, how many terms do I have? We said there were two, so we need to say, okay, is it the sum or difference, and it is the sum, and are they perfect squares or perfect cubes? So we already talked about those perfect squares and perfect cubes, and I showed y'all these charts here. And if you look, well, two is not any of those perfect squares there, and B isn't squared, so it's not even a perfect square. So because of that reason, since they're not perfect squares or perfect cubes, you cannot use that car car or car bus method so that is your final answer because you cannot break that down any further. So um, now let's look at number nine. So your greatest common factor, there wasn't one. So now we need to say we have two terms. And so that is going to be our car bus method. The reason it is the car bus method is because you have that exponent of three right here. So that tells us that that is a perfect cube and there are three seats in a bus. One is also a perfect square and a perfect cube. So I didn't show you guys my notes on the car bus method. So there you go, you can pause it if you need those. Um, so we draw our car and our bigger bus and then you wash it with soap. So it's same, opposite, and the last one is always positive. So now it was cube root, cube root, what times itself three times gives you y to the third. Well, that's y. And what times itself three times gives you that one. That's one. And remember, you don't have to worry about the signs here because we already did that when we did our soap. So now it's square, multiply, square. So you square the front seat of your car to get the front seat of your bus. So if you were to do this, oh, well, I messed that up. So if you were to square that y, that means y times y, which is y squared. Multiply these two together to get that middle term, which is just one y. And it, you don't have to write the one if you don't want to. Again, do not worry about that sign in the middle. And then the last one, you square this back seat of your car to get the back seat of your bus. So if you have one squared, that means one times one, which is just one. So that's your final answer. So you have y minus one, and then y squared plus y plus one. If you did wanna write this one in front of the y, that is okay. So now looking at number 10, there is no greatest common factor, so we move on to our number of terms. There are three terms, and that is your AC method. So our A, B, and C, we need to identify those. A is five, B is 19, and C is 12. So your A and the variable you're using go up top, so A, and the variable you're using go on top of your wings. And as a reminder, when you have an A that's a number other than one, that tells us we're probably gonna need to simplify here. Um, so we have A times C up top, five times 12 is 60. And then B goes on bottom and that's 19. So I'm gonna write out my factors of 60. 
and I know that my signs are both, both going to be positive because they need to multiply to give me a positive, so I know the signs are the same, and they're adding to give me a positive, so I know that they're positives. So factors are 1 and 60. After 1 comes 2, and that's 2 and 30. After 2 comes 3, and that's 3 and 20. After 3 comes 4, and that's 4 and 15. After 4 comes 5, and that's 5 and 12. After 5 comes 6, 6 and 10. After 6 comes 7, and 7 doesn't work, neither does 8, neither does 9. And once we get to 10, it's already on our list, so we know that we have found all of the factors. So now I need to choose the pair that will either add or subtract to give us that 19, and that'll be 4 and 15. So now, do your check. Does 4 times 15 give you 60? It does. Does 4 plus 15 give you 19? Yes, it does. So now, we need to check and see if we can simplify. That 5 and 4, they don't simplify, so we know this is one of our final pairs. But that 5 and 15, they do simplify. 5 goes into 5 one time, 5 goes into 15 three times, so that gives you an x over 3, and if you wrote 1x, that's okay, and that's your second one. So your answer is 5x plus 4, and x plus 3, if you wrote the 1 in front of the x, that's okay, and now we're finished. So now let's look at number 11. There is no GCF, and there are three terms, so we know that's our AC method. So our A is 1, B is negative 8, C is negative 20. So our A and our variable we're using are up top. Our A times C goes up here, so 1 times negative 20 is negative 20. B goes down here, and that's negative 8. So now I need to find the factors of negative 20. So I know that 1 is positive and 1 is negative because if they multiply to give us a negative, they're opposites. So 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 3 doesn't work, 4 and 5. And since the number after 4 is 5 and it's already written, we've got all of our numbers. So now we need to see which pair will either add or subtract to give us that negative 8. Well, 2 and 10 will subtract to give us 8. So let's look here. Oops. So we need to see which sign goes with which. I taught you a trick earlier, and I said that, well, if you have to choose one's positive, one's negative, your largest number, so 10 is the largest, that will be the same sign as your B value. So since the B was negative, the 10 is negative. So if this had been a positive 8 and we had to choose, the 10 would have been the positive because it was the same sign as our B and the 2 would have been the negative. So we can't simplify. Our numerators are 1 and 1 over 10 and 1 over 2 don't simplify. So our answer is x plus 2 and x minus 10. Looking at number 12, we had a GCF of negative 1. And so we have to take out that negative 1 first before we can look at our three terms. So we have negative 1, and then in parentheses, negative divided by negative is a positive x squared. Negative 7 divided by negative 1 is a positive 7, and you keep your x. And then 21 divided by negative 1 is negative 21. So if you want to double check and make sure you did it correctly, you can multiply that back out and see if you got what you originally started with. So now we do our AC method because it says that there are three terms. And remember, you're looking inside of those parentheses. A is 1, B is 7, C is negative 21. So 1 is our a, our variable we're using is x. a times c goes up here, which is a negative 21. b down here is a 7. So we need to find what multiplies to give us negative 21 and adds to give us 7. 
we know our signs are positives and negatives and we have 1 and 21 and we know that um, 3 and 7 will give us 21 and then 2, 4, 5, and 6 don't work so these are our pairs. Now the problem here is that neither one of these will either add or subtract to give you that 7. So that means that the AC method does not work on this problem. So since it doesn't work, that means that whatever we got when we did our last factoring step is our answer. So that means that since we did have a GCF we had to take out, that is our answer. Now let's move on to number 13. GCF, there wasn't one, so now let's move on to problem number, I'm sorry, to step number two. So it says there are four terms, so we use our grouping method. So underline your first two, underline your second two, and your first two terms, I lost my sticky note, here we go. Your first two terms, your GCF, between 10 and 15, it's five, and if you've got two M's here, one M here, you can take out one M. You cannot take any N's out because there's one here, but there aren't any here. Okay? So when you pull out that 5 M, I'm sorry if y'all can't see that too well, but I'm dividing these by 5 M. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And if you've got two M's divided by that M to the first, that gives you an M. And then negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3 those M's cancel and you're left with an N. Now, let's look here. We need to take our GCF out of these two. So it's a positive two and I can't take any M's because this doesn't have any M's but I can take out an N. So when I do that, I didn't give myself any room, I get four divided by two is two M and then those N's cancel and then negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3 and if I've got two N's and I take one of those N's away I have one N left. So now is your checkpoint. Do I have the same thing inside of my parentheses? I do. So now you take out your GCF one more time. So your GCF is that 2m minus 3n, so what they had in common. And then what we have left over is 5m, and then there's a plus sign right there, sorry it was a little messy, plus 2n. All right, so now let's look at number 14. So when we look at 14, um, we did not have a greatest common factor. So now we say, okay, we have two terms. It is the sum, and they are perfect squares. So when we look here, um, oops, that's the cubes. So when we look at our notes, we learned that the sum, meaning when you are adding and you have two terms and they're perfect squares, we say that that answer is always prime, always, always prime. So guys, since there was no GCF and it's a sum of squares problem, prime, okay? Now number 15, notice the difference between 14 and 15. I tried to even give y'all a hint on this one to kind of show you guys if you did try to factor that using the car car method maybe it would hint you that it wasn't right. So it is, there's no GCF and there's two terms but since there is subtraction and it's perfect squares so subtraction difference of squares that is your car car method. Okay, so we draw our two cars, one's a good car, one's a bad car, doesn't matter which is which, and then this is our front seat, this is our back seat. So what times itself gives you A squared, that's A, and that goes in our two front seats, we're just breaking it apart, and then what times itself gives you 81, well that'll be 9. So y'all need to memorize that chart that I showed you guys that showed you all those perfect squares. So our answer here is A plus 9 a minus 9. So you can always multiply it back out to make sure that you did get the correct thing. Alright, so now let's look at number 16. 
There was no GCF, so now we move on to the number of terms. There are two terms here, and they are the sum, and they're perfect cubes. See the exponent of three up here? And 27 and eight are both on the perfect cube chart. So that means it is our car bus method. And remember, you remember it because it's three car, uh, I'm sorry, three seats in a bus. So you then, after you draw your car and your bus, you say, okay, what's my soap? All right, so same, and then opposite, and the last one is always positive, so that's a plus sign. And then it's cube root, cube root. So notice that that's my entire front seat and that's my entire back seat. So we're trying to find what times itself three times gives us 27x to the third. That should be 3x. If you did 3x times 3x times 3x, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27. And then when you add all those exponents together, that's how you get x to the third. And then cube root of 8, well, that multiplies 3 times to get 8 is 2. So 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. And y'all don't have to show this math on y'all's problems. I'm just showing it to you guys just to help you out. So now square, multiply, square. So you square the front seat of your car to get the front seat of your bus. So I have 3x and I square it. So that means 3x times 3x, which is 9x squared. That's why I write this step out. A lot of students want to tell me that they put a 3x squared here, but it's not. It is a 9x squared because you're also squaring that coefficient of 3. And then you multiply these two terms in your car to get your middle term. So 3x times 2 is 6x. And then this last term here, you square your last term of your car. So 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. And that's your answer. So 3x plus 2, 9x squared minus 6x plus 4. So now let's look at number 17. Your greatest common factor was 3, so we're going to go ahead and put that on our answer space. So when I pull out that 3, I'm left with 4b squared plus 4b minus 3. I did that by dividing each of those by 3. So now we need to do our AC method of what is inside of those parentheses because it is three terms. So again, we're ignoring that 3 for now. And so identify your A, B, and C. A is 4, B is 4, C is negative 3. So I'm going to draw my flying x, a, and the variable you're using, so 4b goes on top of your wings. Your a times c goes up here, so 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and your b goes down here, which is 4. Now we need to find out what multiplies, sorry I want to give myself a little bit more room than that. So we want to find what multiplies to give us negative 12. And since it's a negative we know that there are going to be opposite signs. So we have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and then 3 and 4. So the two numbers that will either add or subtract to give us 4 are 2 and 6. And we have to choose what signs they are. One's positive, one's negative. So when we look here, that's a six, y'all. Um, when we look here, your larger number is going to be the same sign as your b. So since this b is positive, your biggest number will be positive. So if this is the positive, that means that that is the negative. So now we need to simplify. Again, when your a is a number other than 1, you will probably have to simplify there. So to simplify here, we would say 4 and 2, the number that goes into both of them is 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is a negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2b over negative 1. 
and I like to just put a box around it so I'm it alerts me to know that's what part of my answer is and then here I have 4 and 6 the number that goes into both of those is 2 so 2 goes into 4 2 times 2 goes into 6 3 times so that'll be 2b over 3 and that's my other set of parentheses so I have 2b minus 1 and 2b plus 3 so looking at number 18 there's no GCF so I move on to my number of terms there's two and it's my difference of that two means it's perfect squares so that's my car car method good car and bad car so I've got my front seat is a squared my back seat is 36 so what times itself gives you a squared that'll be a what times itself gives you 36 and that'll be 6 so our answer is a plus 6 a minus 6 remember you can multiply that back out and if you get what you started with then that means you did it right so now moving on to 19 there's no GCF so we move on to our number of terms which is 4 4 terms means you're using that grouping method so I've got my first two terms here my second two terms here so I take my GCF of my first two terms which is X I can only take out one because there's only one here and there's two here so you can only take out the smaller amount and then between one and two there's no common number so it's just an X when I divide each of those by X I'm left with X here because 2 and 1 you only have one left when you subtract those and then negative 2 and you can't keep any of those X's because when you divide the same exponent they cancel so there I have X minus 2 and then we have to look here now this is where it can get a little tricky so remember you have to show the sign that is in front of the last two terms we learned you cannot have a negative leading coefficient which means this first number cannot be negative so for that reason we have to take out a negative GCF so between 3 and 6 I'm going to take out a 3 can't take out any X's because the 6 doesn't have any X so when I divide each of these by negative 3 I say okay well negative 3 divided by negative 3 is just 1 and you can write the 1 there you don't have to and then you have the X left over 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2 and so now do we have the same thing in each set of parentheses yes the one in front of the X does not change it because it's always an understood one anyways so now I take out what I have in my parentheses because that's my GCF on this step and then you have X minus 3 left over so your answer here is X minus 2 X minus 3 all right, so this is the last problem on this um, lesson. So there is no GCF here, and there are three terms. So that's our AC method. A is 1, B is 13, C is 40. So my A in the variable you're using goes on top of your wings. Your A times C goes on top of your X, so 1 times 40 is 40. And then B is 13, it goes on the bottom of your X. So now we say, okay, 40, what are the factors of that? Well, they're either both going to be positive or they're both going to be negative. But if you want them to add to give you a positive number, then we're going to choose the pair that is positives. So 1 times 40, 2 times 20, uh, 3 doesn't work, but 4 times 10, and 5 times 8, 6 and 7 don't work, and once you get to 8, you are at that second column, so you're good there. So now we look and say, well, what pair will either add or subtract to give us 13? Well, it's 5 and 8. So they were both positive and they are there so now let's do our check does 5 times 8 give us 40 it does does 5 plus 8 give us 13 it does 
So now, since you have ones up here, there's no way to simplify those fractions. So we can go ahead and write our answer. Y plus five and Y plus eight. Really hope that this lesson has helped you guys understand um, how to combine all those rules on factoring. Um, I wish you guys the absolute best of luck.